Hi, this is Beth Dorn, and today I'd like to talk about managing mud and manure in beef feedlots. There are a couple of views out there. The first, Dr. Chris Reinhardt from Kansas State University visits about mud. He indicates that mud kills, it kills performance, it kills profitability, and it can kill cattle. I would add that manure is no friend either. Once the hair is matted, it loses its insulation value. Mud does affect feed intake. When you look at the chart, four to eight inches of mud versus 12 to 24 inches, you can see that there's a two to three time reduction in intake as mud worsens. I would also add that mud reduces the insulation value of the hair coat, and it does increase the amount of energy the animal needs in order to walk and to move. Mud affects the your net energy of maintenance of those animals. Starting at the bottom on this chart, if you see no mud, shade, good ventilation, and no chill stress, we have a factor of one. If we go to an outside lot with some chill stress due to adverse weather, we can increase that net energy of maintenance by 10%. And if we go to an outside lot with frequent deep mud, it can increase it 30%. A good rule of factor is net energy of maintenance increases 7% for every four inch increase in mud. Mud reduces gain and feed efficiency. In this chart, looking at four to eight inches versus 12 to 24 inches, you can see that there's almost a two-fold decrease in daily gain and in your feed conversions. The deeper the mud, the poorer the gain. This is some data done by the University of Nebraska looking at mud depths with no mud all the way up to belly deep and you can see that there is an increase in the potential loss of gain. Holstein animals are more affected. They're more affected because they do not have the body condition and they do not have the thickness or density of their hair coats. This data looking at mud inches, ranging all the way from zero on up to 4.7, you can see the effect on feed intake, average daily gain, and feed conversions. You can see that feed intake decreases average daily grain decreases, and the feed to gain is increased. There are several mud scoring systems out there, but the one that I'm gonna visit and use today ranges from one to five. One being an animal with no tag and very clean, five being an animal that has a lot of manure continuously on the underbelly and on the sides from front to rear. The pounds that are mentioned here are some data out of Kansas State University and they tried to equate what a mud scoring system of one would be in terms of pounds of mud on that carcass versus a five, and you can see there is a dramatic increase. Darrell Busby did some work looking at mud scores and their effect on dressing percent. Looking at the steer at the top on the left, you'll see a mud score of one, the steer on the right, a mud score of two, and the steer on the lower left, a mud score of four. When he looked at the effect on dressing percent, you could see that a mud score of five, an animal that was very muddy, had a decrease in the dressing percentage. They were kind of surprised because they expected that there would also be the significant decreases with maybe a three and a four. They did conclude though, however, what they were scoring was the appearance of the mud on there. They were not measuring the thickness of that mud and that may make a difference that drives dressing percent. Animal health is affected. You look at this steer in the middle and you look at his leg with the arrow pointing to it and you can see that there is some swelling in that all the way from the foot up to his knee. That is very typical for animals that are out there in mud. There is an increased incidence in foot rot. The other thing that we're seeing on animals in terms of animal health is we're seeing some abrasion, some loss of hair, some actual scabbing on the lower round as you see in the steer on the left. We're not sure exactly what causes that. We don't know whether it's the animals in conditions that are too wet, if it's manure pH, or whether it's an abrasive surface. Now, getting to steps, how you manage mud and manure. If you look at these steps, you'll see the top three kind of relate to how a feedlot is designed. The bottom four steps relate to how a feedlot is managed, and we'll go through this in a little more depth. First, it's important to divert any clean water that you can from that feedlot. As you notice in the white arrow on this slide, you'll see that that is following a berm that is in place in order to keep that clean water from going into the feedlot and adding to the manure volume. It's also important to provide adequate lot drainage. 
You can see here, if you look at the fences, that this lot tends to slope towards the center. You can see the solid settling system in the middle with the picket gate that's in, right directly in the center. In order to keep the animals out of that area, and in order to keep that dirt surface dry, you can see they have constructed a temporary fence there to keep the animals out of it, to keep it from churning up that surface and improving the lot drainage. Well-designed mounds are very, very important. If you look at the mound in the bottom, you'll see that it's built parallel to the lot for drainage. It does have a slope of three to four percent. One side does join the feed bunk aprons and the water near the top, near the building. There is approximately 20 to 25 square foot per head on each side of the mound, so 50 square feet per animal. It has a finished height of five to eight feet and it has a mound slope of four to one or five to one with the crown being right in the center of the top where you see that steer standing right at the top of that crown. It's very important to clean and bed your pens. Take a look at any time you can get out there and you can do maintenance with that box scraper that will help improve that. If you can provide any kind of bedding, especially in the inclement weather, that is extremely important. Preparing for rain and snow is important. This is the feed yard I was to. I looked at this feed yard, they had had rain that night, and you can see by looking at the lot surface that they had been in there the day before, cleaning that, trying to reduce the amount of mud and manure that would be occurring if we have, when we have that rain or when we have the snows. I would say snows the same way. Once you get a snow, get in there, get it cleaned out before it melts. There are some recommended square footages per head for animals. This is some data from the Midwest Plan Service talking about an eight to 1200 pound animal. When you look at these numbers, you'll see the different kinds of lots, unpaved lot versus a paved lot versus a barn space. I'm comfortable pretty much with all of these numbers except when we get down here to the barn without a lot. In this case, I think that's probably pretty dense. And remember, they're looking at an eight to 1200 pound animal. With the increased size of animals that we have now, I would suggest that that's probably closer to 40 to 50 square feet per head. The other figure that I would say is when you take a look down at the bottom here of the enclosed and slatted floor, realize that 17 to 20 square feet for a thousand pound animal. Again, I would say where we're looking at our larger animals right now, that's going to be closer to 25 to maybe even up to 28 with these larger animals that are going to market currently. Pen density is important. This was some data that was done out of the University of Nebraska. They looked at mud scores of the animals. They looked at lot mud in terms of the depth of that mud, how many inches. And then they started looking at two treatments, 250 square feet per head or 500 square feet per head. You can see that as they increased the amount of space that was allotted per animal from 250 to 500, there was an improvement in both the mud score of the animal and in an improvement in terms of the lot mud. Bedding amounts, bedding is extremely important. This is some data done out of North Dakota State University looking at modest versus generous bedding. Uh, when you look at this, their modest bedding equated to about a little over three pounds per animal. The generous bedding was about five and a half pounds per animal. They saw no effect on dry matter intake. Average daily gain tended to be improved with bedding. The feed efficiency tended to be improved with bedding. Dressing percent was improved, and that was because the tag scores were reduced as they offered more bedding. And you can see there was an improvement in the percent choice. A good rule that Terry Mater from the University of Nebraska provides. He states that we need to provide one pound of bedding per day for every inch of mud. You look at the animals on the left and while they're on concrete, there is still some slop. There is still some moisture there. There's still, but you see that they've also have offered a little bit of bedding to help absorb that and to help improve that surface. You look at the animals in terms of housing, bedding is extremely important there. While you don't have rain, you will have a buildup of manure. This particular feed yard offered a lot of bedding. You can see how clean those Holstein calves are. In summary, mud and manure will decrease feed intake. It does affect feed efficiency negatively. 
It does slow your average daily gain and it can increase animal health problems. Managing mud and manure involves two things. First, you need a well-designed pen, and secondly, you need proactive management. With that, I want to thank you for viewing this presentation today, and may I wish that all of your steers look as bright, clean, and healthy as this one. Thank you much.